Hello, today I'm gonna explain how you can integrate, implement the concept called iterated function system fractals in Houdini. Um, the thing is that it's pretty simple. You just have to follow this function written here with some parameters that has been provided. Uh, all those par parameters has been found using a base image looking like this and it's been <coughs> um, the image itself has been parameterized using the theorem called Bonsley's collage theorem but I'm not getting into this one I'm just gonna show you how you can visualize uh, this kind of pattern using just uh, just using those parameters with these equations now uh, the thing how it works is that uh, first you plot a point on 0 0 point then using those uh, equations for x and y uh, which is called an affine transformation. Um, you put a variable like a, b, or e, c, d, f uh, <coughs> from those <coughs> parameters list. And the reason, the reason why you have like four rows here as a parameter is because that you want to choose which which of the row to use by a some probabilities here listed here so in this case temp by 10 percent you choose this one as a parameter for a next transformation 35 percent for a next row 35 percent again for the next row and 20 percent for next row to use these parameters to make a new transformation and you do this by number of iterations like any numbers of iterations you want so the first time for the thing you it the point might go here and from here the point itself gonna be added to the list to be drawn and then you calculate the new transformation from the moved point using those parameters with the equations then the point might go here again and here and here and if you continue to do it somehow the visual becomes looking like these using those parameters or these this kind of looking using those parameters so let's try to do that let's try to see how it's gonna work uh, how to visualize it in Houdini okay first of all uh, let's make a geometry and I'm gonna intensively use VEX here because it's mostly the calculations of vectors so I'm gonna start by making a point wrangle and make it a detail okay and what I'm gonna do is to uh, first get the some parameters to so that you wanna that you wanna control uh, first of all let's have a number of points how many number of points you want use by a name of num and I also would like to choose between the maple leaf or the fern leaf since there are two parameters listed in this website so I'm, I, wanna, I would like to use both of them to see the difference so in order to change between them I'm gonna set the type and name the parameter type okay and 
disposal. Okay, well, let's start making those. Well, the first thing you want to do is that the ha is to have those parameters out of, as a variable. This one and this one. And you might want to change some of the parameters parametrically after you set the constant one so that you can see how those parameters will make the visual different. Now, <coughs> the thing is that this is kind of a matrix, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 by 4 matrix, but uh, Houdini doesn't allow you to make that number of matrix nor uh, multi-dimensional arrays, so you gotta find a way to make it easy for you to use those kind of uh, matrix numbers. What I would do is to, well first of all I'm gonna copy these and I'll make a null here. I'll name this controller and I'm gonna make a string variable size of 2 since there's two types and I'm gonna name this IFS arms IFS arms apply now I have two uh, string uh, parameters here now for the first set I would like to set a parameter for the maple leaf but since there is no <coughs> um, multi-dimensional arrays here I'm gonna make it as a string a value so that you can later on use the split function to make it as an, a split uh, array so I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna uh, split those numbers in the in each row with the uh, with the comma like this like a CSV f format Okay, I'm gonna fast forward this. Okay, I'm gonna keep the return as it is since I can use that as a splitting for a splitting function as well. So apply this. And now I'll do the same for the uh, fern leaf. I'm just gonna fast forward this again. And now I have those two variables. Maybe I could also click here and get those variable parameters here I can link with the parameters here so let's make a integer called num and the number could be really big like something like this 250,000 and also a type which is only 0 or 1 okay now let's copy this num to here and copy this type to here and let's given number like 16,000 type is 0 for now it's okay now <coughs> let's make a 
a simple function in order to draw a point based on the equations explained here. Okay, now I'm gonna for loop, make a for loop. with the number of points I have set it for as a parameter then first of all uh, let's have a random value using k and I'm gonna use that random number to get a roll the dice to choose from those uh, four rows uh, using those probability. Okay. Now uh, let's have a float called psum, and here I'm gonna determine which uh, rows to use. Okay. So for int by there's four rows, so I'm gonna type four and p sum is added by a number of the sixth one. 0, 1, 2, C, 4, 5, this one, 7th, which means 6 in programming languages. So I, somehow I gotta get those numbers using I value. Now, right now it's uh, really hard to guess since this is stored in the string. So first of all, I have to make a function in order to uh, explode those strings, split those strings into numbers and return the one that I want using the number of the rows and columns. Okay, so first thing I would do here before going to the functions, going to making a point, let's make a function to get a value from the stored parameter uh, which was stored in string. So I'll name this get uh, mat, mat uh, as a matrix and first input I would is the type there could be a maple type or the fern type and second type uh, second input could be a mat index which could also mean uh, which row to use and finally a item index which means which column to use okay now uh, first of all let's get the parameters call farm farms one which is for the maples also a I have not IFC, IFS. I have farms to equal CHS. IFS farms to. Okay. Now let's click here to promote those parameters here and make a link here with here. So I'll copy this parameter and paste it on the first one and then copy the second string and paste it here. Now, now I have those two parameters. I also would like to have mm, maybe a well, I'll do this later. The things I want to do next is to string. Let's use the split to make a arm lines. Uh, 
uh, using the split IFC parms now I have to choose either if I want to use this one or this one so that will be chosen using the uh, <coughs> input called type so first I'm gonna make a empty string call ifs parms then if the type equals zero then ifs parms is ifs parms one else ifs farms will be ifs farms two. okay now that i have set the ifs farms depends on the type i will split this string value with the return value which is uh, written by uh, backslash n and by doing this now I have either this one or this one and split it into four rows. Now from those rows I have to choose one of it and uh, you can choose if using this input. So the one you want to have is called, I'm going to name this string arm line and which is farm farm lines at mat index okay now you want to do this split again because you want to get only one value from each row so right now it's separated by comma so use string parms array equals split arm line and split by comma and then return the value with the float right now the value itself at item index is string so I have to change it to float from string using a to f function index and yes it's ifs okay now I have made this function in order to, to get the specific values inside the uh, parameter matrix so I'll use this to first <coughs> get the get mat at uh, I want to get the probability of the each type so I mean specific type that I chose here so for type and for each column I at 6 which is the probability and if p is less than p sum then break break right and Okay, now that I get the value uh, well I also need a index I guess which index to use which which column I mean which row it's gonna be used so let's make another variable called C starting from zero and each I iterations uh, somewhere around here C is C will be I 
and at some point in we using the probability this will be breaked out so c will be sometimes it will be zero sometimes it will be one or two or three depends on the probability which uh, <coughs> gives you the random row number for uh, this iterations now let's make a uh, first x value using equations by x time current x current x is okay i don't have an x right now let's make a current x starting from zero also y starting from zero and the current x will be multiplied by get mat type c zero which if you look at those here just a and just do the same for other things b and e and c and d and f so gonna skip this uh, gonna fast forward this since uh, <coughs> You'll see what it's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, now I have set the equations like this. Let's add the point onto this uh, newly created x and y position. So int pt equal at point and at the input zero set. Now x will be x, y for the point will be zero and z will be y and let's see what happens and here you can already see a maple leaf looking like a maple leaf and you can already control the density using the points here and also a type between the maple leaf and the fern leaf Now this is basically it in order to simulate the IFS fractals but uh, that it itself is not that interesting so I'm gonna try to color this to make it more natural nature looking uh, object and probably you make it as a mesh object so that you might be able to for example 3d print it okay let's do that and right now you don't really you know you can't really control the parameters here because it's written in strings here and there's only numbers and types here I would like to change some of the parameters here for either maple or the fern leaf so let's try to do that as well okay in order to do that well the place where I need to add the parameter is inside this get mat since this is where you're returning the value from the string so let's add <coughs> uh, one parameter for each type to see how, what kind of change you can make using the different parameters okay now I'll call the first parameter for type 0 type a a type 0 parm type 0 parm and also for the second one type type 1 farm Okay, 
now click this to promote those parameters here and also let's make the same names parameter here uh, type 0 arm type 0 arm and the range could be from 0 to 1 let's make another one type 1 arm type 1 arm okay now let's link this together okay now let's check which parameter I want to change for each um, leaves. Now for the first one, for the maple leaf, I would like to change two values together with one parameter, which looks similar. This one, the second row, the first A value and the third row A value for the maple leaf. For the front leaf, I would like to change the second row A value and the second row D value since this number looks similar so I might be able to change together. Okay, so the first one is 0.43 for second ones like 0.85 and how I would like to link it is to make a condition for each type at 0 and type 1 now for the type 0 okay <coughs> so the condition was that uh, the mat index was 1 or mat index was 2 also if item index equals to 0 which means a then return this type a parameter okay for the second type the front leaf in conditions if mat index equals to one which means second row and if a item index equals to zero or item index equals to three which means D value then return type one parameter now I should be able to use those numbers to control the maple leaf or fern leaf shape somehow if I change this for the maple leaf yes it is changing somehow like, sorry for that like symmetrically yeah now let's get this back to 0.43 and if I change to type 1, if I change this type 1 parameter, now this time the leaf itself going smaller or bigger. Now it looks like a bone or one whole leaf. Interesting. Now let's get this back to 0.85. Now, now I have those parameters. Now it's time to color this out to make it more natural looking. Okay, now the way I would like to color this, I need to find somehow a rule between those points to color this out. Uh, well, I could think of using a number of iterations like when those points has been made but um, 
basically it's all random so the color will be random as well so I cannot use that what I could use is to see the neighbor distance for each point so looking at the points from here the neighbor distance is somehow a bit far compared to the one that's like here which is pretty close to the neighbors so for each point I could calculate a nearest point distance with the neighbors and use that to for the coloring uh, variable okay let's do that now let's make a another point wrangle okay I'm, for the first one I'm gonna name this IFC IFS I mean and for the second wrangle gonna set the detail and first of all I need to determine the minimum distance and maximum distance for each point now I'm gonna make a new variable called minimum distance which could be really high for initially and maximum distance which could start from minus one and also make a float array called distance distance dist let's do a loop for each point Oops. The reason why I'm using detail instead of point is because I would like to calculate the minimum distance and the maximum distance of each of the calculated nearest distance in one wrangle. So that I cannot do that in point wrangle because it's para it's calculating in parallel. You have no way to know what other points distance is, so that's why I'm using detail. And uh, let's get the position first. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward this again. Okay, um, the reason why I'm using two, I mean, I mean, I'm getting two nearest points is that the first point will always be yourself, which is the distance of zero, which I cannot use. So I want to, I don't want to use the first one, I just want to use the second one. So that's why I'm using, I'm only getting two nearest distance. Nist and the distance between the position and the point at NPS, the second index. Append that distance to the dist array. And if If the distance is larger than max d, then update the max d to dist. If the distance is less than min d, then this time update the min d with the dist. Okay. Let's continue. Now, if, uh, let's do the full loop again for each point. And get the distance from the disks. 
and remap the dist with using the fit function uh, from min d max d that I have calculated above to 0 to 1. Okay, and set point attrib the attribute name called call to the i points with the distance, the remap distance. Now, uh, let's also set the detail attrib the minimum d which I don't know if I'm going to use it later. Maybe not. But let, just in case, set the detail attribute. Well, actually, I can just write like this since I'm using a detail wrangle. Yes. Okay, let's look at the geometry spreadsheet. And I think I got the value from 0 to 1, which what I wanted. Okay. So I now have a color value. I <coughs> the next thing I would like to do is that right now the point is a bit too uh, randomly scattered which is not that clean so I would like to add a function to somehow set those point position onto a specific grid. Now let's make a point wrangle. I'm gonna name this coloring and for the new one I'm gonna make this on grid. And let's make a variable parameter first called grid size. CHF grid size. Click here, promote this, and ma let's make the same thing here. Grid size, grid size. The range could be from Let's see, 0 to 0.1, apply, and let's start from around here and copy this parameter and paste it here to link. Now, uh, I want to make a new Uh, f uh, X and Y and Z coordinates for the point position using the grid size. So what I would do, I'm using R int p dot x divided by grid size times grid size, which will set the point on the grid, and do the same for the X, Y and Z just gonna copy these oops copy paste paste and y and z now y should be zero because it's on plane but anyway now uh, set the point position using the newly created x, y, z. Now you can see that the all points now is on the grid of specific size. If I change the grid size to like this, it will be more mosaic looking. If you make it less uh, smaller, it looks less mosaic. 
Now I'll keep it like this. And although uh, some of the points went to the same points, so there is a possibility that some of the points are on the same point, it's duplicated. So I'm going to use fuse and check the keep unused points to remove some unnecessary points so the points will become uh, 19,000 to 10,000 that's good okay now let's try to color this uh, use the color node and say ram from attribute and use the call and to make it easy to see the difference let's make from green to red and if i change here yeah i kind of see that the outer edge of the leaves are more dense so it becomes more reddish the inner side becomes more greenish because it's more scarce. Now let's increase some points to see a bit more detail like this. Yeah, looks good. And let's also decrease this one. Decrease the grid size, yeah. Yeah, looks really looking like really like a nature leaf right now it's pretty good mm -hmm. now the problem is it's a bit a bit too randomish right now I mean even though if you look from far away it looks gradationally clean but if you go look closer closer uh, well, sometimes you have some red values on the middles, and it's a bit too randomish, I guess. <clears throat> so what you could do, you, well, you don't really have to, but I could use a attribute blur, which could blur the color values that, it, that it's close together and somehow blur those uh, colors okay now as a default it's, it's set to point so i'm going to change the cd which is a color and also change the influence type to proximity and if i change the blurring iterations it it will become now a bit smoother now I want to. I don't want to do it too much. I just want to do like one, two, or three, two. Okay, I'll do it with the two. And just using this, it looks a bit more smoother than before. So I think I like this. Now, in order to make it as a mesh, what I could do, I could just use the VDB. Uh, <clears throat> so let's to the VDB from particles and oh it's too big too big obviously and so let's set the point radius scale to somehow close to uh, this value grid size so copy this and paste it on to the point radius scale now I don't see anything because the voxel size is too big. It's set to 0 0.01. Looks okay. What if I changed a bit smaller? Hmm. It's a bit too bubbly. I'll keep it to 0 0.01 and I'll increase this value, default value, by 0 0.01. Yeah. Okay. Now let's also use the VDV smooth to smooth it out a little bit. 
Let's move it out the BDB a little bit. Hmm. If I should choose smooth or smooth SDF. Hmm. Same. Just gonna use this one. And then the iterations is four. Fine for now. Maybe too big. It's okay. And finally, convert VDB to mesh so that you can export to STL for 3D printing to Polygon. And finally, let's map the color. Uh, attribute transfer. So this is the geometry and this is the attribute that I want to translate. Yep. And here it is. Uh, gradually colored fern fractal shape in mesh. Now if I increase the uh, numbers like here, like 200,000 will become more dense and more colored, more detailly colored. <coughs> if I decrease the grid size to like here, you'll, you can also see more details, but with more holes. I might need if I if I'm going with this grid size I need more numbers so I'll just stick with 0 0.02 if I change the type to maple leaf it will look like this and this it also looks good great and if I change this parameter like 0.8 the leaf will change its shape by its parameters. Cool. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, how this is how you can implement the IFS uh, fractals in Houdini. Uh, thank you.